peace, unity, and love. It's your boy Cushy C coming to you live from the West Side. If you're a fan of the West Coast movement, artists like Snoop, Kendrick, Nipsey, then I got something special just for you. Three of my best songs to date for free. All you gotta do, hit the link below. Any information, songs coming to you in the instant. Don't forget to leave a little feedback too. Let me know how you feel. Let's. Welcome to Sports Court Podcast. This is your host, Dane, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Today, we have five topics I wanted to discuss in today's session, so let's hop on in. For the first topic, we're going to be talking about Mr. Zion Williamson over at Duke and the ordeal he had this past week. Next, we're going to talk about the layout, the Lakers, playoff or bust. It's that time. Next, we're going to be talking about the NBA, uh, the one-and-done era. Is it over? Next, the AFL. Is this uh, going to be a good D-League for the NFL? And last but not least, the NFL. A-B wants out of pit. So let's go ahead and dive on in and right back to topic number one. Mr. Zion Williamson, Duke University. If you don't know already and you haven't heard, they were playing UNC last week, uh, which is obviously a big game for both UNC North Carolina Tar Heels as well as the Duke Blue Devils rivalry game and everybody was there we had people from the celebrities from the likes of Obama Spike Lee and, and plenty of others they all came to see the Zion Williamson show unfortunately the show was cut short I'm, and when I say cut short I mean cut short to the point where all the action happened with not even a minute off of the clock in the first half of the game. And what basically happened is Zion gets the ball uh, on the wing. He's dribbling towards the top of the key. And then he's trying to do a reverse uh, spin in a sense. But when he goes to pivot with his left foot, his foot literally busts through his shoe, which buckled his right knee, and then he went down. But when I say his shoe busted through, the Nike sneaker, specifically uh, the the latest version of the uh, Paul George, the PG, I think the 2.5s, but his foot literally busted through, ladies and gentlemen, and he went down. And obviously that brings up major concerns in regard to a Nike and the future that it has in store for itself in the signing of Zion Williamson. That's obviously going to be a sweep skate. I mean, a sweep uh, stakes. We already know that when he was in high school, he was pretty much an Adidas kid. Uh, now he goes to college. He plays for Duke. He becomes, for the most part, a Nike kid. But the shoes bust out on him, and he played four years in Adidas with this never happening. So, I personally see this being a, a bidding war in the making for the Zion Williamson sweepstakes because come. They come, what is it going to be, June of uh, this year, a couple months from now, when Zion uh, enters the draft. Whatever team gets him at the number one pick, I'm projecting him to be a number one pick. That man's he's going to become an a instant gazillion billionaire because he is a generational talent and he is going to be somebody that is going to put people in seats and fill stadiums. And this is ultimately what a lot of these – NBA teams is banking off of, which is why the the point of him sitting out is a hot topic right now in the sports sphere because this kid could have could have had a devastating injury, could have could have tore his whole knee out, busted his whole knee, and he would have been out. But the irony of it all would have been all of these mega corporations, the school, Nike, the NCAA, and plenty of their sponsors will have made hundreds of millions of dollars off of this kid's name, off of this kid's likeness. And he wouldn't have, and he's not going to see one red American cent of it. And that, my, that, ladies and gentlemen, those here in court today, that is a problem. Period, period point blank. There's no way you can tell me. That it's okay for a human being to go out and generate hundreds of millions of dollars for these institutions. And then that kid isn't supposed to see not one American red cent. He's just supposed to be happy with sneakers and jumpsuits. Because I'm pretty sure Zion can afford his own sneakers and jumpsuits. But he, he will very much more appreciate 
them dollars in his bank account. So this system is flawed. We all know it, and things definitely need to change. But in, in the case of Mr. Zion Williamson, personally, I think he should sit out only because this injury is too close. And it's not like he was actually playing and he got jumped on or ran into like his shoe malfunctioned and he almost busted his whole knee out. Just think about that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, most of the time these kids are out here playing and they go down with injuries, uh, sometimes non-contact. Uh, but I, I don't even know what to call this type of injury in, in, in the since, I mean, he didn't necessarily uh, run into another player. It was just like him versus the 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 shoe versus the the court, and unfortunately, he lost. So I don't know, you know, you know who you place the blame on, and and, and it's like even with Nike, it's like I'm, I'm pretty sure this was one of those one in a billion type of situations, but unfortunately, it happened at the wrong place at the wrong time to the wrong man. And so, you know, Nike is where it is. I, I want to say I read an article that says something like Nike stock lost about $1.1 billion in value in light of the Zion Williamson shoe malfunction. So that just already goes right, goes to show you right there. This this kid is an instant money maker. He is a generational talent and he will be making a lot of people a lot of money soon. And it's just unfortunate that right now, you know, he's not able to capitalize off of his likeness because that's what... You know, America is all about, so they say, you know, the American dream, you being able to come here and, and without any sort of barriers or any sort of boundaries, you're able to, 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 to experience the best that life has to offer. But these kids in college, they don't get that opportunity. And that's a sin at the end of the day. You know, like it's it's in a sense, it, it is a form of slavery, specifically, specifically because, like I said, these kids are putting Putting people's names, I mean, putting people's butts in seats and going back to the Duke UNC game. They said that the tickets, some of them tickets was going for well over two thousand dollars. Now, any other kid playing and any other team that they're playing in Cameron Indoor, you know, they say tickets never get close to the two thousand dollar mark. But because of this kid and who he is and what he's all about, this kid is instant money maker. And he like once again, he he he, he took a. What, what may have been a hundred dollar seat and turned it into a two thousand dollar seat and he doesn't get to see one cent and a lot of people will say well he's getting an education well what kind of education is he really getting if in reality we all know he's going to be there for one year so how is this kid how is he benefiting without risking his ability to earn after he becomes uh, after he leaves college and becomes a professional seems to me that the, the equations off balance it seems like zion is risking and any kid of, of cut from his cloth seems like these kids are risking more by playing in college and we all know why they're playing in college you know as quiet as it's kept hey if you have the ability to make hundreds of millions and billions of dollars off of just sitting back and kicking your feet up and watching some sports you know why wouldn't you do it and that's just the reality of the situation my personal theory is that these kids, once again, make these these institutions millions upon millions of dollars a year without them having to do anything. And these kids and these basketball, specifically in football programs, unbeknownst to some people, the tickets that these kids, these one or two or three or four marquee kids at these big time schools are, are like I said, we got one, one to four to one to four marquee kids in both basketball and football that is really that is literally funding the entire athletic departments at these universities. Because we all know water polo is not making any money. We all know lacrosse isn't making any money. We all know baseball is not making any money. We all know field hockey is not making any money. We all know. Most of these sports that these kids are playing in college aren't making these schools any money. That's why they need basketball. That's why they need football. More specifically, that's what I need these kids' talent. So just understand, ladies and gentlemen, to all my future athletes out there, you are valuable. You are worth something to somebody. Just don't sell yourself short. Really, re -eval really evaluate your opportunities. 
make sure that you really take 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 into consideration all the options that you have. Yes, college, you know, for for marquee athletes going to college, that has been the tradition. But and with the likes of you know Levar Ball with the JBA, we got the NBA G League. They're they're being more open to bringing in some of these marquee talents. You got overseas, you got Europe. So there's there's plenty of avenues, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about you understanding. You know what I'm saying? Do you just want the recognition of I went and played for one of these blue chip college schools and was able to win a national title or would you rather have you know what i'm I'm playing from basketball i'm in the g league i'm getting a hundred thousand a year to hoop to develop and then in a year or two you know i might get called up but you know i'm still eating the choice is yours ladies and gentlemen but you know in the case of mr zion williamson versus nike and sitting out i, I do think that the nike Situation could get very interesting, um, but if I'm Zion, I still sign with Nike only because I mean they're Nike at the end of the day. And then secondly, you know, sitting out. I personally, I think he should sit out. Um, I'm pretty sure he's gonna do what's best for him, but we shall see. Moving right along, Lakers playoffs or bust. Right now, it's not looking good for us, Laker Nation. We need to win, and we need to win, and we need to win. Right now, as of today, we are sitting three games out of the eighth spot in the Western Conference. And if we don't get to the playoffs, this is going to be the first time, I think they said, a LeBron-led team doesn't make the cut. Uh, If not, maybe if if it was this. I don't don't know. I I can't remember if he didn't make it in his first season. But... You know, um, as of this past weekend, we lost to the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, they said Anthony Davis, and we still lost to him, and LeBron was playing. And so my only concern with that is we, we have our stud. They didn't have their stud, and we lost. So I don't know if this is a matter of the Lakers not having this, quote-unquote, sense of urgency the, that the headlines are saying that LeBron says that they don't have right now. I don't know if they're just still kind of uh, shell shocked over the Anthony Davis trade saga. Uh, I don't know, um, but how how we're how we're looking right now in uh, Laker Nation is not looking good, and hopefully we can get it together. Um, like I said, it's it's hard playing in L.A. LeBron, you know, we expect a lot, and you know, we 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 do expect the playoffs this season, and if you don't, then you're gonna be letting a lot of us down, and you're gonna be letting us down not because necessarily that you. Um, didn't make the playoffs per se, but personally, I just feel like there's been plenty of games this season where you, it's been visible that you've been going through the motions and you're supposed to be the best player in the league. You're supposed to be the best player in the world, now that I think about it, but sometimes you just don't bring it every night. And, you know, people are saying that, oh, he's getting old, but you, you signed on a dotted line, champ. So, you know, we expect your best every night, you know, and if you don't feel like you're willing to give us your best, then, you know, personally, I'd rather you just sit out. But all in all, you know, you need to get it together. All right? You young bucks, you know, step it up. You know, you, you're you professional now. And in regardless to, to what's happening, you know, this is the business of basketball now. You know what I'm saying? And, like, it's something that you guys have all been waiting for your whole life. So it's time to step it up, baby, and know that you are professional. So you got to carry yourself like a professional. And no matter what's happening behind the scenes, you know, you have to be a professional. So act accordingly. Um, but all in all, I mean, hopefully, you know, we can't be losing the teams like the Pelicans and the Hawks and, and thinking we're going to make it into the playoffs. I mean, it seems like the Lakers win the games that we're, quote, unquote, not supposed to win, and we lose the games that we are, quote, unquote, supposed to win. So it seems like, you know, there's a lot, still a lot to be done, but if, hopefully we can figure something out and make it do what it do so we can get to these good playoffs. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can make it right now. It's not looking – so the odds aren't looking in our favor, but, you know, hopefully we can get, you know, come get a couple more players off of injury and just have a magnificent run for the last part of the season. Like March, we got to have a abs- – we have a, we have to have a pristine record in March, and that's ultimately what I'm going to leave it at. So, you know, we will be checking in. Um, let's go check out our stats today. Um, go to the NBA standings. Booyah. Right now. The Lakers are sitting at the 10th spot, 29 and 30. And, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's basically a month and a week and a half or two of basketball left. And um, that's, a, that's at least 20 games. So, you know, we got to win them all, <laughs> as many as we can. But we, we got to win the games that we're supposed to win, and we got to win the games that we're supposed to lose. And I'm just leave it at that. 
So uh, this case right now, based upon how we, uh, in the words of Bill Parcells, you are what you, you you are what your record says you are. So right now, <laughs> the Lakers aren't looking too good. But hopefully, we can get our stuff together. But right now, you know, the Lakers they lost that case. Next case. The NBA, the one and done era is over. So going back to the first topic, Zion Williamson, phenomenal talent, generational talent, um, got hurt, which now, you know, is bringing up discussions about the one and done rule, um, which basically says that these kids have to spend at least one year removed from college um, and and be and or be 19 years of age before they can enter the NBA draft. Now. In most other sports, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no such rule that that's in place to where you can go play golf, tennis, um, European basketball, um, and most other professional sports, uh, baseball, I believe as well. You know, you can be, you know, a minor, 18, 17 years old, as long as you have your parents' consent, I believe. Um, you can play those sports professionally, uh, but only in basketball, um, you can't. Now, obviously, for football, you, you know, that's some, some man shit right there. So it's, it's understandable that they, you know, you got to be three years removed from high school to go play some football. But for basketball, no. You know, it's, you know, let, let these kids eat. You know, but once again, like I said before, colleges have been, colleges, a lot of their profits, you know, a lot of their money is coming from this talent, this marquee talent that's coming to these schools for one year. So it's in these, it's in the NCAA and these universities' best interest for this one and done rule. So I'd be interested to see if we start seeing some some pushback from these institutions as well as the NCAA. Now, obviously, um, those organizations have no power in you know thwarting the NBA's desire to you know reduce the the age to join the NBA draft. But I'm just interested to see how it all plays out because, like I said, you're. You're going to be taking multi-million dollar players, multi-million dollar paydays from these uh, from NCAA, these universities, and I, and I doubt that they're going <laughs> to go down without swinging. So um, one and done era, um, I, I definitely believe if a kid feels that, you know, he wants to go pro and he has interest from these professional teams, he should be allowed to go play, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, there's, there shouldn't be this, this rule in place that inhibits him from being able to become a professional and use his talent and his likeness to earn a living for himself and his family because that's what it all boils down to at the end of the day these kids just want to use their talents and their skills and their likeness to take care of themselves and their family better than what they've ever experienced in their life so if we're if we're if if, if, if we if we as a country and if we as a society believe it's okay for us to do that then we have some some soul searching to do but all in all yeah we, these these eighteen year olds let let these kids come in now. Talent wise, you know it is what it is. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. But you know what I'm saying like I, I do not believe that there should be a rule on the books that is purposely keeping them from making a decision that no other sport keeps their players from making. So one and done rule. Let's see it. Um, they said it probably won't be here till about 2022 or 23, I believe. So still got a couple more years to go. But you know it should be interesting. Next case. The AFF, the AAF, I should say. Um, is this going to be a good D League for the NFL? I've had the opportunity to check out uh, parts uh, of a game or two. I, I haven't necessarily uh, tapped in for a full game, but uh, I have seen some highlights. And, um, you know, I, I think this, this AAF uh, League should be pretty interesting. Um, I think it's good that they, they're kind of starting it uh after the NFL season, personally, I think it kind of would be a little bit better if they maybe did extend it off into the summer, only because that would kind of give us something to, to do or look forward to looking at outside of uh, baseball and NBA Summer League for a little bit of time if they do have NBA Summer League. But um, I think that the AAF, um, it, it could end up being a good D-League for the NFL, only because, you know, we're going to – from 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 what I've read about it and what I've heard about it, it, it seems pretty professional. Um, they did have some issues with payroll um, that, but within the first few weeks. But one of the NHL owners, who may have been part owner of one of the franchises, you know, he came in and uh, infused the league with some cash, about two hundred and fifty million large worth. But um, you know, that was pretty much his buy-in. Is I, mean, I think he probably more than likely got some equity for that. But um, it seems like they're they're willing to do what it takes to keep this league going and and keep it up. So it should be pretty good. 
Uh, like you said, the games are on um, national TV, uh, CBS, I do believe. So we got a, a national audience. And like I said, these guys, uh, these these all these college kids, or some of these these guys, these former NFL players, you feel me? They just getting might get up, get them get them some good reps, you know. So come training camp, NFL, you know, they got some tape and um, maybe get an opportunity to get some uh, playing time in the NFL. But I think it should turn out pretty good. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I wish them all the best. Like I said, we got some for former NFL coaches, uh, a lot of former. Um, NFL executives are part of the management leadership team for the AAF as well as these franchises. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it seems like they, they're they in pretty decent hands in regards to having experienced individuals uh, leading the way. So, you know, we should see. We shall see. You know, it, sh- it should be interesting. So, AAF um, looks like it's going to probably be a good addition. Um, there should be some good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Another opportunity for these these players to get, get a check. Um, as well as get some good reps in so they can ideally, you know, elevate up and go and play in, in the big league, you know, which is what I'm pretty sure a lot of these these kids really want to do and the opportunity that they feel the AAF can provide them. So, shouts out to, uh, you know, all them kids. I know a couple of cats uh, uh, when I graduated from college that, you know, I'm pretty sure that they appreciate something like this being a, a available and at their disposal now. So, this might be the new trend. You know, we, let's, let's, uh, we, we might start seeing a lot of – Major sports um, kick off these developmental leagues or some leagues are kind of maybe come and be some uh, developmental uh, components for these professional leagues. But, you know, it should be interesting. But, you know, sports is sports. We love it. So by all means, it's more of the same. So let's keep it coming, AAF. uh, More power to you. Um, Next case, last case, NFL, AB, Pittsburgh Steeler, no more. He wants out. Um, Apparently, he met with the big boss and came to a meeting of the minds, and he's gone. Obviously, they're just not going to give him away for nothing. You know, we have a player who's, I think they said for the last five years, the only player in NFL history to catch 100 catches five years in a row. So, you know, A.B. is that man. You know what I'm saying? Um, He's, I think he's going into his 10th year. So in football years, you know, he, he definitely got some uh, some miles on them tires, but the man is still a uh, perennial talent. You know what I'm saying? And he's still he's, he's still getting getting touches, still getting to the house. And so um, whatever team ends up getting him, you know, they're they're still going to be getting a, an amazing player. Now um, he, he he seems to have some uh, interesting personality dynamics that. Um, Partly, uh, some say, went into the deterioration of his relationship uh, with Ben Roethlisberger as well as Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh. So uh, the team that's going to get him uh, obviously knows that and uh, understands that. So it shouldn't be any surprise to them. But you know, we should be into, we he we should be into some uh, like I said, AB should be good. Um, they they're saying uh, the main team I'm, I'm hearing is the uh, 49ers, San Francisco 49ers. Um, looking at looking like they're trying to make him, uh, trying to get him to make a coast to coast move. Obviously, the price tag is going to be high, but for what the 49ers are trying to do uh, with Garoppolo, assigning him to a big deal, and you know he's going to need some talent. You know they didn't resign Pierre Garcon, so they're leaving a lot of money open, and we should see you know what what's going to happen right there. Uh, we it should, it should be pretty interesting at the end of the day, but. Oh, no. The boy should be doing some dangerous stuff come this uh, next season for whatever team he ends up being with. But, you know what I'm saying? A.B., great talent. Um, it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to win a, a Super Bowl in Pittsburgh uh, with the Steelers. But, you know what I'm saying? Um, it is what it is. And just think about that. It's been almost nine years since Ben Roethlisberger won his last one with Antonio Holmes, I think it was. And that's a long – okay, yeah, because Tomlin won a Super Bowl his first – like season or two when he started coaching after Coward left. So, yeah, man, it should be pretty interesting, though. Um, but, yeah, A.B., he's, he, you know, every good thing comes to an end. Um, it's just part of it right there, more confirmation. But hopefully, you know what I'm saying, he, he's leaving on good terms. Um, he's forever indebted, obviously, to Pittsburgh. Gave him an opportunity to make a name for himself, paid the man. But then, like he says, moving forward, you know, he's, 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 he understands what he's doing now. According to him, he understands the business side of it, and he wants to get paid. So, 
I'm saying if as long as he's willing to put that work in, which we all know AB is willing to put that work in, you know what I'm saying? Pay the man as far as I'm concerned, you know what I'm saying? Like, get that man his dollars. So on that note, um, wish you well, AB. Uh, hopefully you can get to a place where you are loved and welcomed and paid. Um, and hopefully you can get a nice little Super Bowl because it would be good, you know what I'm saying? You're definitely a Hall of Fame talent. But obviously, you know, you guys don't play solely for the Hall of Fame. You guys want that good Super Bowl win. So whatever team you can get to, hopefully you can get there. The thing about the NFL, man, it really is anybody's league, man, any given Sunday. So make it do what it do, gentlemen. Uh, on that note, uh, I want to thank you guys once again for tuning in to Sports Court Podcast, powered by Plains and Palm Trees. We appreciate uh, you tuning, tuning in once again. Don't forget to tell a friend and tell a stranger to tell a friend about us. Um, like I said, if you have any 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 topics that you like for us to cover, or you know, if you like to be a guest, you live in LA, holla at your boy. You know what I'm saying? I love talking sports, and would, wouldn't mind talking sports with you. So, without further ado, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Have a good week, and make it a great day.